the one thing women do is we are the num- we were the number one breadwinners in this country yeah. quite frankly yeah. um 60% of over 60% of children born in this country are born with no fathers registered on their birth certificates podcast and chill Matt G, the ghost lady and Lynn Moleko Henda, what me, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to it. It's another episode of Podcast and Chill. I'm hanging out with the beautiful and the talented Olwe to. You. <laughs> you know, it was crazy because um, I've known you for quite a while. Well, I've known yeah. your husband mm. for a while. So whenever I see you, I'm always like, oh, that's Neo's wife, you know. <laughs> so last night I'm actually doing research. I'm like, oh shit, you did that and that. I'm like, wow. <laughs> This whole time, <laughs> yeah, all, like all I've been is Neo's wife, huh? <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's crazy, man. Um, how was it like growing up in, in in PE, man? So I moved. We moved from PE as a family when I was about seven years old. Okay. And we traveled quite a bit around South Africa with my family. Mm. Um, my dad was a um, worked at an SOE. Okay. So he was a senior manager at an SOE. So he was transferred quite a bit around um, around the country. So, PE, my earliest memory was visiting and spending time at my grandfather's house, mm. and, um and also visiting my grandmother in Utenaig. Mm. Um, she, she lived in Utenaig until her passing. So, yeah, th- those were my earliest memories of PE. Thereafter, we moved from Tata, East London. Where's your, where's your mother in all of this? In my mother. My mm. mother was around. Okay. She was around. Yeah. So... Um, we moved from so we moved from PE um, to Mtata to East London to Polokwane to Pretoria. Pulukwane. Yes. Oh, wow. So um, these are. I mean, we we moved quite a lot around South Africa at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And um, when did you come to Joburg then? Came to Joburg. Um, I mean, when you live in Pretoria, you're practically you in, in Joburg, Joburg and yeah. you're spending a lot of time in Joburg. But officially moved to Joburg in 2010. 2010. Mm. So what primary school and high school did you go to? Sure, a lot. Yeah? A yeah. lot. Are you ready for the list? <laughs> <laughs> Quite a lot. Yeah. Grade 1, grade R, grade 1, collegiate. Moved from there to, I'm trying to think now, track back. Crew Primary School in East London. Wow. From there, grade, that's grade 2, grade 3. Um, Glenstantia in Pretoria. Grade three, that's grade three, grade four, I think grade five, grade five, grade six, grade seven, went to um, Presda in Pretoria. Yo! <laughs> We're not even in high school yet. No, I'm not even in high school yet. Damn! Presda. Um, and I was deputy head girl at Presda, by the way. Yeah, but cheers. And then hey, no. from there, moved to, went to into high school, into Dr. Dare, <laughs> went from Dr. Dare to Sedaven. Didn't like it there, it mm. was a boarding school. Came back, went to Dr. Dare again. And you've got boyfriends in each school, of these schools. None. I was such a loser. You get it. I was such a nerd and such a loser. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. I was such a loser. Yeah. Oh my, I was such a nerd. Yeah, yeah. It was so bad. Mm. Wore glasses, called four eyes. Wow. Had freckles. Imagine this light skinned, skinny girl wearing glasses. Yeah. And with, like, with freckles, every, like, it was bad. Wasn't it hard for you? Because like, it sounds like every week you were moving. We were moving quite a lot. And you can't even make friends, mm. you know? Um... It was a struggle making friends, and it's something that I, you know, I speak quite a lot about is just the dynamic of forming real, intimate female friendships with the moving around. And you need female friends. Yeah. You need that kind of um, society around you and the kind of space around you. But it was hard to, fi- to, um, to find friends, to make friends, to solidify mm. friends before the next move. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, w- it was quite a lot. Did that impact you in any way as a, as a person? Um, negative impact was... I don't have a lot of friends. Even now? Yeah, even now. I don't have a lot of friends. I, I'm, a very, I'm a very isolated person. I'm a very yeah. me. Like, it's just me. And if I have somebody, if I have people around me or friends around me, it's, I, it's like segmented. I've got friends for certain, like, mm. we talk about work. And yeah. then I've got friends for where we hang out and we drink. And mm. then I've got friends where we talk about certain things. So that's, that, that's one impact that it's had on me. Um, and also... 
when I do make a solid good friendship, I get, I go all out. Yeah. I'm like all in because I'm just like, this is it. Yeah. And then I get like really, really disappointed and hurt when it all falls apart. Um, once again, I'm also a cancer. Mm. What do so, they say about cancers? Cancer, we're, so, we're such nurturers. We're such moms. Uh, like we, we invest okay. everything into people we love. Yeah. Um, and then the positive impact is I'm so independent. Like mm. honestly, I, like I couldn't care less what you think of me. Um, until I, I really, 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 really love you, I don't really care. Mm. Like. I don't really care. Yeah. So that's like the positive impact of it. You, Which you is learn. a great trait in this industry. Yeah. And you also, you, I think with moving around so much and also like you, you, you sort of learn to, you, you learn to readjust. You mm. learn to be fluid, to be mm. flexible um, to the new scenario. Yeah. And also a, like something that I also did quite a bit when I was younger, that is a negative, Im- that had a negative um Impact. Impact. I don't know if it's impact or an, it was a negative thing that I did. Was each time I would move, I'd be like, hmm, what kind of Oluetu do I want to become now? Oh. <laughs> so it's like, now I can reinvent myself. Whole new city, whole new space. Hmm. What kind of Oluetu do I want to be now? Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's, that's also crazy. Another thing. Yeah, it's, it's like a whole new space, whole new city. Hmm, okay. Because it's a fresh start. It's a fresh start. It's like, hmm, what kind of Oluetu do I want to be now? Hmm. Okay. This is what I didn't like about what I did previously. This is what I like about what I did previously. Okay, let's try and do something different this time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Were there ever once a time we wanted to be like the bad, bad old lady? Never. Uh, hey, it was it, it was more the lessons that came out of that was it was more a a thing where I wanted to be a better person. So each time I feel like okay, I made a mistake when it came to doing one, two, three, four mm. in this scenario or this space. What can I do better now? Okay. I need to be a better friend when I meet friends. This is how I need to introduce myself. This is how I need to be more assertive. And going into this new space now, this is how I'm going to be. Are you antisocial? Um, like you, you, you get awkward. I don't think people. I'm antisocial. I don't think I get awkward with people. But I do get awkward with people that just don't have a common sense. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, honestly, like... <laughs> If somebody just comes like sideways, I'm just like, yeah. I'll just switch off. Yeah, yeah. Like, really? Who's the last person to do that? Uh, I can't remember. Like, yeah. I, it's not even memorable. Yeah. It become memorable. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here you are, right? Mm. Uh, you're growing up, reinventing yourself every second, you know, every second <laughs> month, or whatever the case may be. So it sounds to me like um, you were in your own bubble. I was. I was. So when did you become free? Was it when you were at home with your family? Not even that, eh? I was the eldest of three children from my mom and my dad. Um, yeah, my dad's a Tosa man. Okay. I can just like, All right. the, the long yeah. and the short. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so from my mom and my dad, we were three and I was the eldest of three. Um, and I, I, I think I partially played parent to my my brother and my sister for a long time and my mom would always be like why you want to parent your 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 siblings Mm. and i felt an obligation to because there were certain things that my parents were going through Mm. that i was privy to and i was privy to them at a very young age Mm. um so you're always trying to you can't even be yourself like really Mm. be be like a child or be yourself at home because you're the eldest trying to keep things together and trying to manage certain things and certain um and also keep up expectations as well so when you're at school you're trying to keep up the 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 marks you're Mm. trying to keep up the um like your your conduct Mm. the discipline Mm. so that something at least is keeping the family happy at home and Mm. the parents happy at home so i think in every between home and at school it was keeping up appearances to Mm. a certain extent and also keeping up um emotional appearances um and I think at a very young age, I had to adapt and have a, a high, an, a high emotional, ma- uh, you know, state of emotional maturity from a yeah. very, very young age. Um, so I became, I feel like I became myself once I got, I, I, I got to higher end of high school okay. and varsity, yeah. where now you know what you want. I know what I want. Like I'm starting to realize what I want. You don't exactly know what you want because you're sort of in your teens, right? Yeah. But, Still trying to figure it out. Yeah, but but now I feel like I've got more control over where my trajectory is going, especially in varsity. So, having been in boarding school, 
going to varsity and, and staying um, in, in an apartment close to varsity. I went to tax. I was my own person now. Mm. So that's where the becoming, I feel like the becoming of Olwe 2 came yeah, from and yeah. became more independent, just be myself. Yeah. And... I was very, I, I was a very entrepreneurial varsity student from the get go. From the get go, very entrepreneurial. Started hustling. Wait, tiny mile, isn't it? A lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> like I said, broke doesn't look good on me. Yeah. <laughs> I love money a lot. Um, so from from then, I became entrepreneurial. Started hustling. Started making my own money from from that age. Where does your love of money come from? I think I just don't know how to do broke. Yeah. Like, gee, I just don't know how to do broke. And, and it's okay. And it's okay. My mom was that person. My mom's also that person. My mom doesn't know how to do broke. Yeah. My mom, like, she, she always looks good. Good, yeah. Like, you'll never tell the difference between my mom being broke. Yeah. My mom having, like, money. Like, yeah. she's always looking good. Yeah. So, how did you think you were going to plan pan out uh, when you're in varsity? Like, what was the loyalty that you imagined when you're in varsity? I went into varsity wanting to be a quantity surveyor. What the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> they, the long and the short, they count the bricks. Okay. <laughs> on, on, in a building. So <laughs> okay. they, they are the numbers people yeah. um, when it comes to construction. So I wanted to be a quantity surveyor. And I realized our first project in first year was to go onto a construction site and yeah. to actually, like, um, to shadow a quantity surveyor and to shadow a construction manager. Yeah. And that was torturous. Mm. I hated that project. Mm. And I realized this might not be exactly what I want to do. Yeah. Um, and I think from there... And, and also, I mean, besides that, I still did well in my schooling. Mm. And then I tried to figure out... And I, th- there was an aunt of mine, who, Aunt Nyami, which was my, uh, my mom and my mom's sisters, my aunt's um, best friend. And... She was also a quantity surveyor, but she'd gone into business. Mm. And I was like, okay, maybe if I push through my studies, I might actually be able to um, to get to where she is. Mm. So I had something to look forward to. And I was like, okay, I'm going to push through. I did well my first year, but I was financially excluded from tax. My parents um, were going through a lot in, mm. in their lives. They're also going through a bit of a separation um, and they were financially not able to to maintain my schooling, mm. and I was also that middle income, so I was also not qualifying to get funding. Yeah. So I then dropped out from quantity surveying from the built environment to economics. I went and I did communications, which I could better afford because it was a cheaper course to do. Yeah. Um, registered for BCom, and. Yeah, I carried on with the BCom for two years and I had to let that go because once again, I couldn't maintain the finances because my parents were also going through, my, my parents were going through a separation, like I said, and I had to also help out at home. Mm, breadwinner. <coughs> yeah. So I had to help out some, somehow at home. And then from there, um, I think the, just the entrepreneurship got the better of me. Wow. I just carried on with the entrepreneurship. And where I could, I would just I would do courses in digital marketing. I would then do a course in this and do a course in that. And eventually, I was like, I really, really love this property thing. Okay. And this is around the time that no one I met as well. I was like, I really, really like the property thing. I'm very good at the digital marketing as well. I'm very good at the marketing. I've been making money and hustling off of that in the interim. But I want to go back to this property thing. So I went and I did the property um, property investment. I finished my property investment um, and then went back into property. Mm. So that was really... <laughs> <laughs> that was my course, eh? Yeah, that was yeah. my course in life. And, but I found myself back in marketing. You know what's crazy? I came back... 360. Right back into marketing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's crazy, when you were saying all of this, now, I, mm. I had a flashback, mm. whatever you call it. Like, okay, cool. You, 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 you grew up taking care of your uh, siblings. Mm. Boom, straight from there. You got to take care... Of let's say you perhaps you know in terms of finances yeah. and getting into school and whatnot, and then from there you have kids. Now you got to take care of the kids. Mm. Now you got a husband as well. So how old are you now? I'm 29 now. In those 29 years, have you ever had a time where you're like, "Fuck, I'm doing shit for me"? I think I have. I have, and one thing that I'll always be grateful for my husband in doing is always 
he always makes me sit and reflect on what do you want. Mm. What do you want? Okay, I hear you want to do one, two, three, four for the good of the family and for your family and for the kids. But what do you want? So I think that's where my, like, my grounding in who I am and my, like, my sureness in knowing exactly what I want and who I am and what I want. It's, he'll be like, okay, cool. What do you want? Mm. And then we'll always find a way to make it, fi- to make, it make financial sense. Ah, so it's never a battle. It's, it's you know, when you, I, I, I personally feel like I'm, I married my soulmate and I married wow. the guy who's perfect for me in that yeah. sense of what do you want? And then we'll make it make financial sense. And to somebody else, this would li- literally be a life coach. Yeah. You understand? Like somebody else could be a therapist. Somebody else, and I'm not saying he's my therapist because <laughs> that, that's also there. I've got a therapist. But like, you what? got a therapist? Hey, life man. is soft. <laughs> <laughs> Life is <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. wow. <laughs> but his all it's it's, it's that sound. You need that sounding board in your life to say, okay, cool. You this is what you want to do. Let's make it make financial sense. Wow. Mm. So now, when you meet Neo, is your life complete now? Are you like okay, cool? Finally, I found someone that I can travel wherever I want to in the world with. Mm. T- uh, take my myself into different spaces with and be comfortable in those spaces with this person absolutely Mm. absolutely um yeah absolutely um i don't know if i'm supposed to add on to that but (laughs) (laughs) he's he's just that guy he is he knows how to 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 come forward for me and he also knows how to take a step back and allow me to shine do you guys even fight we do. You <laughs> lie. We do. But like, it's, it's not like, we, we don't like fight like, ah, eh. no, 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 no. What no. is it? What we, is talk, it? we talk through things. So at the beginning of our relationship, we always set a standard as to w- w- how, how do we communicate? How do we deal with issues in our relationship? Okay. This is how we do it. This is the issue. Mm-hmm. This is you. This is me. This is what we need to deal with. Mm. We don't deal with each other. Mm. So I like that. Don't but play, then don't egos play, come and, and, he's, and he's a football player, so yeah, don't, yeah. Don't, don't play the man, <laughs> play, play the, the ball. Yeah. But egos come into play, though. It's easier said than done. Uh, what do you mean it's easier said than done? Because, like, here's the issue, right? Mm-hmm. But the issue could stem from you, and I don't feel like it stems from me. And then that's my ego playing. Well, then put your ego aside. In a relationship, you've got to put your ego aside. Mm. It's, it's, it's no time for egos in relationships, eh? Your ego never comes into the fore. It does. It always does. But that's where we, we need to correct each other. Okay, yeah. are, are you now dealing with me or, or are the, you dealing with yeah. the person? Yeah, or, yeah, or yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. issue. Yeah. So that's egos. There's no space for egos in a relationship. Yeah. Uh, what's your take on marriage, man? Because in this day and age, it's like a thing of the past. You Listen, know? it's tough. Mm. It's not I easy. Think it's not easy. Relati- it's not relationships in general are not easy. Mm. Um. And I also just think a lot of us come from brokenness, myself included. A lot of us come from brokenness. We come from spaces where marriage is filled with so much toxicity. Marriage is filled with so much resentment. Marriage is filled with so much, um, so many things that have been literally just chucked on us from our elders and our elders' elders. And we haven't gotten to the bottom of why, why are we getting married what is the purpose? What are we trying to achieve together? What legacy do you want to leave behind together? Um, we, we haven't gotten to the bottom of this. Mm. Um, why did you get married? Why did I get married? Because I, I actually didn't think I was going to get... I, I always knew I was going to get married young. I didn't think I was going to get married at the time that I got married. But Noah said two words to me that made me completely do a 180 and realize that I can still have what I've always wanted to get married young and have my children young and to, like be done and live happily ever after in retirement with older children. Yeah. He said, I'd rather leave you a better person than I found you. Mm. Mm. And those words alone were like, ah, oh, this is the guy. This is the one. Buzz. And this is how I'm going to move forward in life. This is the person I'm going to move forward in life with. This is the person I'm going to build a legacy with. Somebody wants to leave me a better person than they found me. Why the hell not? Are you telling me that's all I needed to say to my soulmate? Oh, wow. This whole time. <laughs> Unless you mean it. <laughs> Unless you mean it. <laughs> Please 
say it yeah, if yeah, you yeah. mean it. And are you one of those couples that encourage other people to get married, or are you like, hey, dude, it's up to you? It's do you mm. like honestly do you because marriage is not an easy institution. Yeah, yeah. It's not How easy long you at all. How have you been married all. for? Um, what are we? Where are we now? Sure. Eight years now. Wow. Mm. Wow. Mm. It's not an easy institution. Marriage is not easy. Marriage is also, I think, there's a lot of unraveling. With getting married and having children, there's a lot of unraveling you do. There's also a lot of demons in you that come up. And there's also, like, if you haven't healed, there's a lot of triggers that will come your way. So... It's, it's an everyday healing process if you allow yourself to heal through some things that you go through and some triggers that you go through inside your marriage. Yeah. And if you allow therapy to play a, a, part. A, to play a part in, mm. in, in your healing process. Yeah. So, I mean, are your parents married? No, 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 no. I so was raised by my mother. Y- you, y- yeah. you see now, like some of these things are going to come forward in your marriage. Where you reckon? You're like, <laughs> if you get married, you'll be like, well... Yeah, um, I want my wife to do everything for me. I want yeah. everything to be done for me. I want this because you Softness. expect her now to be your mom. <laughs> yeah. Because your dad was never present. You don't understand yeah. what the role of a dad should be yeah. and how present he needs to be. And, mm. you know, how, what does he do around the house? When she's cooking, what do you do? Mm. Do you sit and watch her cook or mm. do you take the pots that she's done with and wash them? Mm. So these things, and she has this expectation that she hasn't spoken of as well, mm. that she must now get over and try and communicate that I don't appreciate you just sitting there and watching me cook mm. when you could just be taking the pots and washing them mm. or playing with the child whilst I'm cooking and now well, the we child's crying. we have a dishwasher, crying. but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Soft living. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Soft living. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so these are some things that you know, communication and being able to work through them and the triggers that yeah. she might have. That yeah. I'm always doing things around here, and you do fuck all, and you're like, yeah, dude. I bring the money and she's like, yeah, as if money, like money <laughs> cleans the dishes, right? <laughs> money puts the dishes in the dishwasher, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So how do you get in the? Uh, uh, the entertainment business now is that from uh, marketing or from Mrs. S.A.? Actually, none. Of oh, the okay. Two. Oh, okay. Um, so I had a blog before even joining Mrs. S.A. I had a blog called The Art of Superwoman. I still have it, and I would constantly blog about um, things like being a young married woman, um, having children, etc. So it was more a, a mom blog and a lifestyle blog. And what spun off from there was I would get interview requests on stations such as Power FM, 702. Um, yeah, radio stations would call me up and say, hey, can you just come talk about this topic for us mm. um, that we picked up on your blog? So radio producers clearly watch my blog and, yeah. and read my blog. Mm. So I then did a, um, I then did a, an, an interview on, on these radio platforms and it blew up my blog quite a bit. And it, then people started labeling me a media personality. Okay. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm a media personality. And then TV interviews would come from there and would spin off from there. And I mean, a, a, alongside this, I'm still carrying on my blog and my social media prominence is still booming. And one thing about digital and the social media space is... It's given so many people a louder voice. Mm. It's, it's allowed us to, to, to project more and to give more information and to share more. And my blog grew. My social media following grew. Um, the interviews started, getting, um, started becoming more. Um, and then brands started approaching me to collaborate and to work together. Do you still and get abused on social media? Abused? Yeah. Abused Arrest. How? I don't really get harassed on social media. Nah. Hey? Me, I, the block, block and <laughs> you keep move it moving. on. <laughs> block and keep it moving. I mean, I I don't invest my energy in anything negative on social media. I used to. I used yeah. to entertain um, some bashes, and and then I realized it drains you. It does. It takes everything out of you, and I'm like no more. I remember you once got dragged for who was the guy, the chef guy, Tibbs. No, I didn't get dra- dragged for what. Because uh, he was part of some list, and then you were like, still, you said something like, 
correct me if I'm wrong. Mm. He said something like, I don't care if he's on the list, he's still my friend, blah, 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 blah. Something like that. I did not say that. You didn't say <laughs> I that? I didn't say oh, that. Oh, wrong all the way to. I didn't say that. <laughs> well, I didn't say that. Show Tibbs love, yes. No, I didn't say that. Mm. And Tibbs, Tibbs is not a friend of mine. He's an acquaintance. Mm. Um, been invited to a few, um, few of his events. So clarify, what happened there? So I put out a tweet, which is obviously, prob- it was it, it was careless from from my pers- in the wording it was extremely careless um that i will not unfriend a friend of mine who's been labeled an abuser or is an abuser yes yes yes, yeah. yes so i said that um the timing of the tweet was completely off mm. um but yeah that's what i tweeted and people immediately associated it with me um defending a person who's an abuser who happens to be my friend and everybody tied it to a particular person yeah which was it was not it. Yeah. But my, I mean, my standpoint was mainly because as a friend or a family member of an abuser, um, why are we not calling them out within our spaces? Mm. Why are we not calling them out? Who must call them out and hold them accountable if not the friends and the family within their circles? Yeah. So that was really my standpoint on that. And yeah, that was. Have you ever been abused? No. No, yeah. I've never been abused. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wow. Hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, what else did I want to talk about? Uh, oh, yeah, your kids, your kids, man. <laughs> How's it like having kids? Eh? Um, actually, that question before bothers me because have I ever been abused? I want to I wanna go back to it, actually. Yeah. You know, as I feel like the, you know, as a woman who's been in corporate before, mm. there is an element of having been abused in corporate, there's no woman who's worked in corporate that has, a black woman particularly, mm. who has never been abused. Yeah. And that's one thing that we need to address. Mm. And black women within corporate spaces are constantly abused. Yeah. Every day. And are constantly done under. And just a black woman, as a black woman, to say that I've never been abused would probably be and, and have been in corporate would probably be careless of me. Mm. Is that one of the reasons why you left corporate? It's not one of the reasons why I left corporate. Hmm. I'm trying like I'm 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 trying to find a way to answer this question. I left my last job in corporate because of structural dismissal. And it was, you know, it, it was an, yes, it was an element of abuse, but it was more of a, it was a, it was power play. It was power at play mm. where I was. Yeah. Mm. And that sucks when that happens. It eh? does. It does. Because you, you feel <laughs> like you can't do anything. Mm, mm. And I don't want, I don't want to talk about it any further. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, I wanted to ask you that now that, okay, you see the problem, what do you think the solution is? Um, For other young black women who are going to be in corporate. I mean, there are women on social media that are advocating for um, for equality within corporate spaces until we tear down the systems of patriarchy, until we tear down the inequality within corporate spaces. We will never, we, we, I, I don't think we'll ever find an equal footing as women within these spaces. we dealing, as a black woman, you're dealing firstly with being a woman. Mm. And then secondly, we, with being black. There, there are so many, I, could, I can never delve into all the issues yeah. and have and all unpack, the solutions yeah. <clears throat> and unpack them fully. But within our organizations, within our spaces... I think the, the the one thing we need to um, we need to learn to do as black women when we've found and we've gotten a seat at the table is to voice and air these issues ah. and make sure that they are heard at any cost. At any cost. At any cost. Um, a lot of women are having their heads taken off within corporate spaces for doing so, and they're becoming the sacrificial lambs, and they're mm. sacrificial lambs of our generation, and you know. It is what it is, and it has to happen for us to have an equal bearing. And then there's, you know, there's women who choose not to, or mm. who choose to. I'll just, I'll voice it, or um, I'll, I'll, I'll have my say. 
I'll retweet. I'll retweet. But that in itself, we cannot discount that effort mm. as well. But we need to be able to air these issues in spaces where we have a seat at the table. All right, let's talk about your kids, man. How has it changed your life? Woo, my, um, my kids are absolutely amazing. I mean, I've got three boys that yeah. are completely different personalities. Um, Who's the one that uh, drove <laughs> your car, that crashed the car? Morgan. Morgan does Morgan's a lot of things. Morgan's my nigga. <laughs> Morgan, Morgan Morgan does a lot of things. Morgan's painted a car. Morgan's <laughs> Morgan's crashed a car. Morgan's been sent to the shops to go buy gum and came um, to go buy bread and came back with a packet of with with a full plastic bag full of gum. Um, oh god! And then Mikhaili's the more soft spoken. Yeah, he's 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 like my angel. He's yeah. like soft spoken. Yeah, he's meek. He's <laughs> conversational. He can like sit down and say, "There's something that bothered me." Yeah, can we talk about it? Yeah. Oh wow! And then Malik. Is just a he, he Malik is he's a typical Aries. Yeah, there's no gray area with him. It's either he's upset or he's happy. Wow, he's just he's running the house. Yeah, he is running that house. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, and who's your favorite? I don't have a favorite child. I think when I need like peace and quiet and like solemnness and I need a conversation Mikhail is my guy uh, like Mikhail I'm August my nigga cuddle with me <laughs> I'm like I'm having a very very down day today and I need an upliftment Mi- Morgan's my like he's yeah. my guy I'm like Morgan how are you my boy and he's like he crack the jokes and he'll like he's there he's that guy Are we planning on having uh, girls Man who am I to say <laughs> Who am I to say who am I? I, I definitely want one more child. But then, who am I to say it's going to be a girl? Yeah. Um, I definitely want one more child. I think four is a good number. Four is a good number. Mm, my husband won't agree, but four is a good number. And I wish you the best. Oh, yeah. I wanted to ask you about Miss SA. Uh, Miss Universe, I mean. Uh, Zozin Tunzi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What was your take? I'm sure you were filled with so much joy. I am. And I mean, th- there was one thing that... Um, I posted a blog post in 2017, was after my, uh, my first princess reign as Mrs. South Africa, where I spoke about the role of pageantry and what it has on our, um, on our South African tourism, our South African economy, what it does for business in South Africa as yeah. well. And one of the things is, you know, if you're going to use a, a person's beauty to be able to portray um, this, w- what South Africa is or what the tourism is. This is the reasons why we have um, certain brands that that back up and sponsor a, a um, something such as Miss South Africa or um, or pageantry. They want to allow South Africa to shine. They want to send out a particular message. Let's do it, but let's on, send out the correct representation yeah. of who we are, number yeah. one. And let someone's beauty be used mm. to send out that message, but let it be true to who mm. we are as a nation and in that way we we also d- um we we also liberate the disenfranchised women we allow them to play a role in how they feel about our country yeah um and having a woman like zozi who represents a majority of what we look like in south africa yeah. with her kinky hair and her you know her dark skin it literally speaks to every single woman in this country mm. to say you are also part of our rainbow nation you're also part of what we stand for and what we're about in south africa did she influence the hair did she influence the hair um i mean i i cut my hair before and i don't <laughs> i don't want, i don't want to say no yeah 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 because i mean why did you she, decide to cut your hair then? i just wanted a new fresh look for 2020 mm. I just wanted a new, fresh vibe. Um, I just needed to cut off the dead weight. Mm. I need to let go of a lot of things. Yeah. Feel good. And I wanted to feel the shower on my head yeah. when I'm showering in the morning. That first shower is amazing. Oh, it was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so I decided to cut my hair. Well, Ntiki Mazwai would love you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're a troll. <laughs> All right, cool. We're going to play a game called Story Time. Ne? Okay. So I'm going to give you some celebrity names. Okay. And then you must just tell me a story. First story that comes to mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, first celeb, Mini Tamini. Um, I, hang, I hung out with Mini a few years ago. It was... Um, it was in, on... When was it? 20, was it 20, 2018? No, well, it can't be 2018. Mm. Probably 20, 2016, I think. Yeah. December. Yeah. I'm actually not even sure anymore. Yeah. But anyway, um, we, we hung out in Cape Town. Um, so that's where the 1% hangs out. 
was December time. And she's such a cool human, hey? Yeah. She's so cool. And I think at the time, a champagne brand had booked out a whole, like, mansion for her. Yeah, yeah. Or she had oh, booked yeah, a yeah. whole mansion. Okay. I'm not sure. But it was like, there was, because there was just a lot of champagne in yeah. that mansion. Yeah, that, yeah. Like, <laughs> that, that she had And um, she hosted a New Year's Eve party And it's also where I got to meet her brother Who's late oh, Who's okay. left us yeah, He's, um, yeah. Kosi, what an amazing, beautiful human mm. um, But yeah, th- that family the, Like the Laminis are so cool They're, mm. they're so chilled So when you guys like, met was, It wasn't the first time you met her then Was it my first time? I, can't, like, I actually can't remember the first time can I remember the first? <gasps> I'm lying. She actually was the host for Mrs. South Africa. Oh, yes. Okay. She was actually the um. She, she was the host for the finale. Yeah, that's where I first met her. Yeah, and then that was the second time I think I met her. Um, and I met her through my other two friends, Ukolisa and Okaya. Mm. They um they Zanga. were also in Cape, yeah they were also in Cape mm. Town at the time. So we we were all there and we we're all chilling together. Um, yeah, during that December actually. Hmm. <laughs> what do you guys talk about when you guys are chilling? Like, you guys all in one room. Actually, these are very ambitious people. Nah. Listen, like, you don't leave a conversation with Oli, Sakaya, Mini, and even the likes of Moanele without being like, Shh. What am I doing with my life? What am I doing with my life? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Where am yeah. I going with this life thing? Yeah. <laughs> like, I need to get my act together. Yeah. I need to learn to wake up at five in the morning. Yeah. I mean, I nearly host a show at six in the morning. Can you imagine what time she's up? Yeah. Like, I'm just like, and, and she still does all these MC gigs and all of that. And she still has, and I'm just like, dude, listen. I, I, I was, uh, I used to work with Anel at, at, at 947. Mm. So just chilling with her and chatting to her. I was like, oh, okay. So work this ethic. is life. <laughs> you work feel like you haven't done shit. Dude. And she's and, and she's my executive producer on Oh Baby. Oh, nice! Mm. Yeah, I saw because I've got it on WhatsApp and I saw yes. uh, put it up when it was when it was launching. How did that come about? Did she approach you or vice versa? Did you go to audition? So she she approached me. I think it was last year, it, like early last year, I think. Yeah, and she was like, "Hey, listen, there's this show that I'm working on, and I'm pitching it to Channel, and da 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 da." Um, and I was like, "Okay, yes, you're telling me this because she's like." I'd like you to be the presenter on the show. I think it's something that you can literally take and run with because it's so suited to your brand. It's who you are. And I was like, me. Yeah. Did you, did you me? believe it was Anele? No, no, no. I, I knew it was her because we'd met after, uh, um, we'd met on her TV show when she had the, the TV show on SABC3. Oh, yeah. Real she talk. In, yeah. She invited yes. me over for an episode. I was pregnant with my leak at the time. And we had a conversation. It was a motherhood conversation that we were having. Mm. And from there, you know, she, then she invited me to her birthday party. So we'd gotten to sort of know each other. And also because our circle of friends sort of linked now. Yeah, connected yeah it made sense. I was already friends with Kaya and Golisa. I'm and trying like, to get oh, into that also- circle, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying. <laughs> <laughs> so, because I mean, I was friends with them, and it was like, oh, okay. So it, it's sort of the the dots connect. Yeah, yeah. And then I was invited to a birthday party. It was an ex- like I was like me. So w- when that call what? comes, right, and she's talking about your brand and whatever, do you feel is it vil- not vilified? What's the word? Do you feel like oh shit, this mm-hmm. is what I've been working for? You know what I mean? Like, because you, you position your way in, yourself in such mm. a way. So is this validation? Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, it was, that's actually a good word. It was <laughs> validation. Like, oh, snap, somebody sees me. Yeah. It was like, wow, I'm seen. I'm recognized. Like, it, it, was, it was the it. And I think also when I looked at the content for the show and I looked at the positive light, I mean, you have so many shows that, um, that, um, on TV that talk about life events of people, weddings, um, you know, Dating. Dating. Mm. But a life event like a baby shower put together in a positive light with mm. a positive message, sharing the stories behind the mothers and the women that carry these children. It was like, hmm, mm. this is it. Mm. Um, so much positivity, so much good energy, so many good vibes yeah. around something to do with birth. This is it. Yeah, I'm sure it's seamless for you, no? Um, it wasn't seamless because I had a lot of... Um, I had, I had a lot of fears to get past, like presenting on TV. <laughs> not everybody's going to see me. This is not a platform that's owned by me. Yeah, I yeah, can yeah, edit yeah. and I can, because yeah. I mean, you know, you're a podcaster, so yeah. you edit your content according to what you feel like is, yeah. is good for 100%, show. Yeah. But 
you know, I had to let go of that. And then there was also, I went um, Im, like immediately. So from that time when she called me, it was a whole year later that it all came together. Where she called me and was like, listen, dude, that thing is happening. <laughs> and I was like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I literally went onto YouTube and I was like, watch tutorials <laughs> about how to present. <laughs> I said, you're like, what tutorials on how to present? I was like, just search like, how do you present? Like, you should have called me. How I would have told you. And it was no auto cue. There was no. <laughs> Don't worry, I would have gotten you fired. <laughs> uh, maps, map, mm, Maps. When did I first meet Maps? Met Maps at a few events, but I doubt he even recognized me or anything. Mm. But officially met him. When earlier this year, there was a brand that took um, some influencers and, and I was doing the, the influencer strategy and the digital strategy oh, for a particular okay. brand. So it took the influencers to France on a trip to go wow. see their headquarters, not their headquarters, but the home of the brand. Um, and he was one of the influencers that we brought on and we met there. He's such a cool guy. He's so yeah. chilled. Um, also, like he's extremely focused, globe trotter. I mean, he literally was jumping off of another plane, got onto another plane, and then he was on the way to France. Oh, that's and, the life. Um, I mean, he lives that life. He's oh, like literally from one plane life. to the next. That's that's Maps's life. Oh, um, and that's that's I'm how so I jealous. met Maps. And he took a. He's got this video that he he posted once, but he's like he he like holds us hostage to it, like of us sleeping on a train <laughs> on the way to. <laughs> <laughs> to where we were going and like the whole everyone was passed out and he was the only one awake yeah. and he took this video of everyone sleeping <laughs> I was like you're just the worst uh, we gotta get our hands on that video man but speaking about globetrotting you do that as well man I mean you were telling me you've been to Old Trafford Cap Now so you're jealous. only mentioning the soccer places <laughs> <laughs> the rest doesn't matter the rest doesn't matter you're only mentioning the football oh my gosh listen to you <laughs> like old and you had old Trevor, you're like, ah, fuck, you didn't even care, right? Not that I didn't care. Listen, I'm like, for me, I was like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Man U fan. Yeah, yeah. the Arsenal fan. Yeah. Even he rates Old Trafford as, as a better football stadium. Wow. Wow. Than the Emirates. Yeah. <laughs> so, which continents haven't you done? You've done um, all of them, right? I haven't done South America. South America. I haven't done oh, South at least America. I've done South America. I haven't done Asia. Oh, okay. We've done. A, I think we've done a lot of Europe. But quickly, where do you like traveling? Give me three places. I love like Paris. Paris, absolutely my favorite. When we did our like for our second international trip, we did Paris with our children because I absolutely love Paris. With um, mm, I mm. love Paris. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, where else do I love? I love Poland. Poland. Yes. Wow, I didn't see that one coming. I love Poland. I'm absolutely obsessed with Poland. I love the Polish. They're so, mm. they're so friendly. Yeah. They're very like. Is it like a Scandinavian country? No. What's a Scandin like? What's a Scandinavian country now? I don't know. It just sounded cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what a Scandinavian country is. Like, I don't know. I I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And the last one. Um. I think I love Dubai because Dubai. it's a fa it's such a family friendly space. Yeah, I loved it because like I could lit I literally passed out on the pool deck and I wasn't worried about my kids. But it's not safe to go to Dubai now. They're gonna think you're a slay queen. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, like contrary to popular belief, people wear thongs to the beach in Dubai. <laughs> wow, is it? Mm. Jeez. It's just when you leave the beach precinct. Yeah. That you just have to get dressed up. Yeah. All right, uh, Boiti. Speaking about thongs. Oh my gosh. I have this <laughs> one story with Boy. Oh my gosh. Okay, wait. Before I tell this one story with Boiti, do you know that Boiti has an alter as an alter ego? You you guys was like ask her. Yeah. Have yeah. you ever interviewed Have you ever interviewed No, no, I'm trying to, I'm trying yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. If you ever interview her, you must ask her about her, her alter ego called Baby. Baby? Mm. Hey. She Is it like public knowledge or I don't know if it's public knowledge, but like she has an alter ego called Baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I partied with Baby. Wow. And Baby is it. <laughs> <laughs> I partied with Baby. Baby's been a lot of threats to a lot of people. <laughs> baby, like she she threatens people in clubs. Like wow. I've almost gotten in a fight at, at like what is it, Coco in yeah, Cape Town? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost gotten in a fight in Coco in Cape Town. Now like it's like let's, it's time to go home now because yeah. of Baby. I feel like Baby's the one who's been rapping, not Boiti. 
<laughs> baby is it. You must, you must ask about baby. Wow. Okay, cool. And Glenn Lewis, lastly. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so my husband has um, this thing called FNL, Friday Night Lives. Yes, that he does yes, at the yes, house. yes, yes, yes. And he's I'm still been waiting for my invite. Tell him that. Ne? Really? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I'll tell him. <laughs> um, and so we were trying to get, like, Glenn Lewis on for the longest time. Yeah. When I say we, I mean him. Mm. I emailed Glenn Lewis once and I sent him a WhatsApp and he said yes. Yeah. Hey, right. cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Levels. <laughs> and he came through. <laughs> he did a, like a proper, proper, proper mm. yeah. Are you a and Deep House fan? I, you know what? I was never a Deep House fan. My husband introduced me to Deep House and now I think I'm... Also, my kids love Deep House. I think it's because whilst I was pregnant, played a lot of Deep House. Yeah. He played a lot of the Deep House music to them whilst they were in the belly. So... That's all they sort of know. They love good music. Yeah. They pick up on good music. They've got that ear. Yeah. And they're very much into Deep House. Yeah. Malik is obsessed with Deep House. And he like, he's into DJing now, it wow. seems, at the age of one. I've seen that video that I posted yeah. on Insta. He's like... DJ Ash Jr. <laughs> <laughs> he's coming for you. <laughs> coming for all the jobs. <laughs> coming. Oluti, thank you so much, man. I feel like I know you a little bit more. Thank and you. next time I'm at your house, we play 30 seconds. We should be teammates because I think... Yeah. <laughs> I know you now. Yeah. We are there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say, hey, Old Trafford, where is it? <laughs> so when do you get time to make love to your husband when you're busy with all these things? Trust me, I find the time. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey no. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything I'm leaving out? Is there anything? Mm, no, not that I know of. Yeah. You sort of covered everything. Sheesh, you've done a lot of research. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't talk about the real housewives thing because I didn't watch it. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I don't um, watch uh, those kind of things. Well, it was just a, it was just a bottle of sanitizer. I just like. Was that like a really a big thing? It was a big thing. It seems For like, real? like but I just bought out a bottle of sanitizer. Like, yeah. What's the big deal, guys? I asked people to just sanitize their hands because they were around a baby. Yeah. Hey, you know, the thing is with, with, with white parents, they don't understand. You know, like in the black culture, when you have a baby for three months. Yeah, you, you must, must stay home. Yeah. Mm. Why well, what? Mm. They try to avoid things no, like I think, this. I think it's also because like we, we don't, we don't have, never mind the culture of sanitizing, right? How many times do you wash your hands a day? Quite a lot. Oh, do you? Only for when the, you for go the pee. Sake, No, for the sake of the podcast. <laughs> Quite a lot. <laughs> oh, so you're saying that for the podcast? Yeah. Don't touch me, Maggie. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, we, hand washing is so important in keeping healthy and also keeping children healthy, especially because you have, you're a father. Yeah, you're yeah, around yeah. your child quite a lot. Yeah. There's so many avoidable diseases that we pass on to our children. That can be avoided just by simply washing your hands. Mm. Wash your hands, just sanitize your hands, guys. It's just, it's a form of good manners. Would you ever go on Real Housewives and be like part of the cast? No, not right now. Mm. No. Doesn't fit your brand. Mm. Not that it doesn't f- fit my brand, but like, sure, it's a lot. Have you been watching the season? No, no, no. I told you, I don't watch. Hi, Shamdi, right? <laughs> Is it a lot of drama? I'm okay. I'm okay hey? Aren't those things staged, though? <laughs> Not necessarily, hey. I don't. None of these things are staged. Even my my one was not staged. What it was is you're directed. You're like, okay, you can walk in now. Oh, okay, that's all it yeah, is. Yeah, and then it's edited oh. so that it suits what needs to go out. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Suits the narrative. Yes. Oh, I so get you. Nothing is really staged. It's it's directed. Mm. Okay, cool. Oliti, thank you so much, man. Thank you. Where are you going in the future? We're busy with the. We're going to do more TV? We're going to do more podcasts? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll definitely see with the TV. Definitely more TV. Um, The podcast, definitely. It's still up and running. I'm still going to go on for a long time. And then the sit-down event, the tour. We're going on tour. Joburg first. Let's see what city comes up after. Yeah. No, man, listen, I love your hustle. When I speak to you, it's just like Anel. I feel like, yo, what have I been doing? (laughs) (laughs) You get what I'm saying? But all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. Love him long time as well as you. When are you playing 30 seconds again? I don't know. You let me know. Nah. Mm. Okay. Be easy. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. By the way, this is for you. You can wear this on the sit down. Or when you're cooking for your hubby or whenever. Imagine. <laughs> podcast and chill with Meg G while I'm cooking for my husband. <laughs> this but is small. This is it. fine. It's perfect. It's perfect. Thank me? you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Love you long time. Thanks, Meg G. This has been mm-hmm. Podcast and Chill. We are here. Boom. Podcast and Chill. Meg G, the ghost lady, and Lynn Moleko.